So Asperger's in adults. In this video, we're gonna be covering nine ways that you can spot Asperger's in somebody quickly. Coming up. Hey, I'm Dan. I have Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on the subject, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and join the most accepting family on YouTube and learn more. In this video, I'll be covering some symptoms that have been proven to help identify Asperger's in somebody. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Aspie world, where we understand autism from an autistic person's point of view. And so before we get into the video, I just want to ask you guys a quick question. And I would love to know what your background is. Is if you're a parent or partner or loved one of somebody who's on the spectrum or you're a healthcare professional or industry professional in the field let me know in the comments below just because I'd love to start that conversation with you okay so let's get started number one people with Asperger's syndrome will find social situations very confusing and they won't really understand a lot of the social cues where uh, typically people understand body language a lot more with social cues like whose turn it is to talk next, when to finish talking, how long to talk for, what the boundaries are in that conversation and things like that. But people with Asperger's syndrome just sometimes don't have that ability and this is one way to identify it and it's super common within people with Asperger's syndrome. I myself suffer from this issue as well um, so social situations can be very confusing and because of that I kind of tend to ignore and isolate myself from social situations. I don't want to get involved and I avoid them like the plague. This is all down to the fact that autism affects the communication part of the brain and this is why it's a neurological disorder and this is how you can really tell. It's like the first steps of really telling if somebody has a neurological issue where there may be something uh, on the autism spectrum there. So this is a really good one to look out for. So number two, people with Asperger's syndrome will find it quite difficult to make small talk. Now small talk is the conversation that people have uh, in social situations that just kind of comes naturally to them and they have this natural ability to just talk to somebody who they may have met in a bus stop or in a shopping center or whatever. But people with Asperger's syndrome have a huge issue in um, engaging in this talk. I mean, how do you start a conversation? It's quite difficult. I find it quite difficult to start a conversation with a stranger or somebody I don't really know or somebody who I've just encountered for a few seconds. I mean, I'm not sure why there needs to be a conversation in the first place, but this is something that I found that I do differently to a lot of other people and that I always kind of like notice that this is a trait. So when you're dealing with somebody who you think may be on the autism spectrum, look out for this fact that they more often than not will have difficulties with small talk. Okay, so number three. The person with Asperger's syndrome may find it difficult to have some imagination um, and or, or just uh, imagine imaginative story writing or when someone's telling the story, they can't really imagine it. I have this massive issue, right? So this is an example for me. Uh, my girlfriend, she'll come in and she'll say like, I did this in work today and this person's over here and they stood there and they had this thing here and there was this position there and I'm just like, I have no idea. I can't imagine how the layout of her office looks or whatever. I can't understand uh, how, you know, the layout of, of the, the, the school or whatever. It, it's really difficult. I have to really see it with my own eyes to understand it and I find this really difficult and it actually kind of, um, it also affects my directions as well when I'm like when we're driving somewhere we're trying to find somewhere my directions are really poor because I can't imagine what's next and stuff so this is something to look out for because it's a huge huge one that's um, uh, you know definitely affects people on the autism spectrum with Asperger's syndrome number four people with Asperger's syndrome are normally pretty good with picking up details and facts about something that they may be really into so um, it's fine details are quite often common um, so for instance uh, when I, when I first met a guy who I'm not friends with called Tom, he, uh, I noticed that he changed his trousers during the day when we were in, we were in a college course together and uh, halfway through the day he changed his, his trousers uh, or his hoodie and uh, I'd always notice that he changed his clothes and I'd always say to him like, hey, you know, you're changing your clothes or like um, when somebody does something quite minor, like they maybe change their hair halfway through the day, I'll notice that the change is there. And so those small, small details are, are, are really interesting because a lot of people just ignore them um, and they don't really realize them, but people with Asperger's syndrome really find those fine details and I'm good with facts like I love learning about facts and I always retain information about facts I don't know why but I find this fascinating but people on the autism spectrum definitely retain these facts especially with Asperger's syndrome it's a crucial one to look out for now number five is social imagination or uh, trying to understand what the other person is thinking so people with Asperger's syndrome um, 
have an issue with um, figuring out how the other person feels or how another person, uh, you know, what they may be thinking. So, for instance, uh, if I was talking to somebody about a topic and that topic upset them, I wouldn't really notice that it upset them. I'd have to wait for them to tell me, Dan, this has upset me, uh, you shouldn't really talk about this topic. And this happens all the time, especially with their feelings as well. I, I don't understand other people's feelings. I don't know if they're happy or sad. They have to really kind of tell me. I mean, at very extreme levels, I know someone's happy or sad, but generally it's difficult to judge that or gauge that so this is something to look out for when you're trying to spot if Asperger's is the condition that a certain person has. If you guys are interested I did a video on unusual Asperger's symptoms um, which are the more unusual types and I'll leave that in a card above here so you can check that out after this video if you're interested in seeing some unusual traits of Asperger's syndrome. Okay so number six people with Asperger's syndrome can usually focus on certain things for long periods of times. Now a lot of people call this zoning out but I like to call it zoning in so a lot of people say oh they're zoning out of kind of reality but it's more like zoning in and it's kind of like what well, like for instance sometimes I'll be somewhere and I'll see something on the floor maybe it'll be a bit of electronic equipment and then I'll just look at it and and I just zone it right into it and then I'll start thinking about the complexities of it how it got there what it's made of what its purpose was what I could really use it for how I could take it apart use it for something else uh, what it looks like what it kind of resembles and all this kind of stuff you know it may take moments and moments out of the day for me in my mind, but it'll be like minutes and minutes for everybody else. So this is something to remember. If you see somebody zoning into something uh, and zoning out of what you'd call a typical environment, then this could be another causing factor of the Asperger's syndrome. So number seven is being rude unintentionally. Now, I have this a lot. A lot of people find me arrogant or rude, um, but it's not like my intentions. I've never intended to do that. So people with Asperger's syndrome never intend to be rude or arrogant. It just may come across like that because again, it's all down to that social communication and the um, social imagination and understanding what is going on in that conversation and where your boundaries are. So I may say something which is an obvious fact, but something to be aware of is being tactful in your approach to conversations. So one thing I'm not is I'm not very tactful in, in conversations. I may say the wrong thing at the wrong time and it's really difficult to gauge that. So somebody with Asperger's syndrome will definitely have those issues trying to really pinpoint the, the right things to say at the right times. Okay, number eight is strong, narrow interests. Now, people with Asperger's syndrome, everybody I know on the spectrum, and I know loads of, loads of people now thanks to YouTube, um, we all have a narrow specific interest. Like, my specific interest is like UFO conspiracy theories, and I know like as much as I can get my hands on it, I buy books on it, and then I just like overindulge in it, and I just, I just love learning about it, and it's like, I just love focusing in on it. It's almost like my relaxation in a way. But people with Asperger's syndrome may have a specific topic that they're really, really into. Um, and it could be anything. It could just be, you know, it could be a movie star. It could be learning about movies. It could be anime. It could be Pokemon. It could be absolutely anything. But if you notice that they have an obsessive, unusual, or typical, but obsessive focus on an interest and know a lot about it, like a hyper, hyper focus, then this could be a causing factor again due to Asperger's syndrome. Number nine is routine. So people with Asperger's syndrome like to do things in a certain way that are inflexible um, and they're very repetitive. So like I like to get up the same way every single day. I like to do the same thing. I like to wear the same clothes. I like to have my morning routine exactly the same. I like to have my day routine the same. Uh, and when we go anywhere, I like to plan out what we're doing and have that routine in place because those things make me feel calmer, make me feel more secure and safe. And without them, it would cause a meltdown or an outburst or it, and it would just seriously upset me. And so people on the autism spectrum, especially Asperger's syndrome, love routine and certain rigid, inflexible patterns. Um, it's just um, comfortable to live your life like that. I find it chaos outside of these patterns. Um, my brain can't cope with it and my mind can't cope with it. It's, it's difficult to explain, but it's something that is there and it's a, it's a huge, huge uh, factor in Asperger's syndrome. Okay, so I know I said I was only gonna give you nine, but I'm just gonna give you an extra bonus one. This is number 10. Now, number 10, I hear this a lot from people who I know. People with Asperger's syndrome may find it really difficult to make new friends or just make friends in general. I remember in primary school, um, this was really difficult for me to make friends. Um, I, I didn't really have many friends in primary school. And then in secondary school, it was even more difficult to make friends. But I found that by playing music, because I'm a multi-musician as well, and I taught myself to play instruments, by playing music, I found other people who played music, and I then made friends with those people, and they've been my friends, they're my only friends really that I've had my entire life. So 
it's difficult to make friends because you have to find some way of relating to them and it, often the world can be very isolating so if you see somebody who's got a huge difficulty in making friends this could be down to the fact that they have Asperger's syndrome. If you'd like to learn more about autism and Asperger's make sure you hit that subscribe button over here and to see my next video which is a playlist on what is autism click up here to watch that. I'll see you next time guys. Peace!